What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Ford Error. We are here at another What the Truck. Labario, What the Truck. How you guys doing? We are great. Tell me a little bit, who are you? And then tell me about your awesome F250 Crew Cab. Uh, where should I start? Uh, a lot of you already know me. I go by the name Liborio Davalos. I'm uh, originally from south of the border by a bunch of years in Chicago and now finally in Paradise, North Texas. Oh yeah. Where, you know, I'm very happy to share with you today my 67 originally F250, which goes by the name of Levi's. And, you know, let's start with the name. Perfect. Levi's is just something that uh, I came up with because it reminds me of uh, your favorite pair of jeans that you've been wearing for years and years and you just cannot get them worn down enough to throw away. I love so that. So this is Levi's. I, I don't know, it could have been red originally and it's just so faded up that end up white. Who knows, but uh, that's where the name come from. So tell me the story on first, how you love Ford trucks, and then why did you want to buy this? When did you buy it? And then how did you find it? Of course. So my love for Ford trucks comes like, you know, it was passed down from my dad that uh, owned it in 1967 back in Mexico. It's the one truck I learned to drive on. And uh, I had always that, that passion for Ford trucks. But four door, four trucks like really hit me hard in, in the heart. And I was looking for a four door truck for the longest time. Finally in 19, I mean, I'm sorry, in 2005, I found this one in the city of Colorado Springs. It was actually 1,200 miles away from my household in Chicago. I found it on eBay. Had no engine, and after paying $1,500, I had it towed back to Chicago. So you found it on eBay. No yes. motor, no anything. 1,500 bucks. Yes. Night. How much was it to tow it home? I did the towing myself. I borrowed the wrecker from okay. the shop I work on and I towed myself. So with all the expenses, this truck was originally a little over $2,400 that it cost me with no engine. Damn. And it was F-250, a logger. Uh, I had great plans for it since the beginning. I wanted to put a, a diesel engine, which I did but I didn't like the result. Which one did you do? I did a 7.3 IDI okay. out of a, like a 1989 uh, F350. Okay. And my purpose for this truck was, my vision was to have uh, a driver, something that would be dependable in a long ride. And when I installed the diesel engine, I found that this truck wouldn't be dependable with all the modifications that I had to do. Consider that back in, in those years, uh, you know, there wasn't as much technology or resources available as far as parts. So everything was homemade. And I didn't consider that it would be dependable enough. So I scrapped that project and went back to the drawing board. I decided to put a big black 460 fuel injected engine out of a 1991 F350, that was the original donor. And so I did a conversion. I kept uh, uh, four speed uh, overdrive transmission, electronically controlled. And that's a drivetrain that I have nowadays, except that I have a brand new engine that I found also in good old Craigslist. Uh, zero miles is still in the wooden crate from Ford. Wow. And so I have a brand new engine. I had a reman uh, transmission installed. And I also have my gear, gear vendors auxiliary overdrive unit rebuilt at the time. So now I can do 80 miles an hour, 1900 RPMs, and the engine feels just like it's pouring. 
That's awesome. So, um, when you originally built it with the 7.3, did you do the suspension like you have on it now? Uh, or did, like, what was the progression? Okay. So, it was the F250 also, suspension. Yes, sir. You keep saying F250, but it's got a long bed. So, was it a 350 or it was a 250? Okay. It's, it's a good point you bring up. Truck was originally four-door short bed, which was a F250. The F350 with the long bed didn't come up until a couple years later. Ah. Uh, previous owner installed the frame and long bed into this, into this thing. It had a nice topper with, uh, you know, 1980s style uh, carpet benches in there, <laughs> you know, like... It was a party. Like, yeah, like a party wagon. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I, after I decided to go back to gas as a power plant, I swap all the suspension from a, from a F100. So I had the lower three inch DJM I-beams in the front. I did a six inch step on the frame. So the floor is raised six inches. And I have the original leaf spring set up in the back with airbags just to raise it. I have complete um, airbag in front and now I have just recently installed the, the, the John uh, Rod's drop beams that oh. are four and a half inches lower. Ah. So with the airbags, uh, this is what I can achieve when I completely deflate the system. Man, that looks so good. Yes. Could you raise it up so I can show them the suspension? Absolutely. Heck yeah. Let's ask her if she wants to go up. So what kind of controls and stuff are you using? Okay. Another thing, when I built this suspension, nothing was being built to fit this truck specifically. We're talking circa 2007. So I had to build the whole system, uh, you know, from, from scratch. Everything is handmade or home built. I mean, so everything that I have is either eBay special. Um, there's this guy uh, close to us in the Mansfield, New Medics. That guy, I got most of the stuff from him. Very, very nice guy, Sunni. Um, hopefully this won't demonetize us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go up. So everything is... Sorry. Oh! You need well, to turn you it on, this. huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. All right, so what are they looking at on the front? What all did you do? We have the John Rods drop beams, four and a half inch lowering. We have our airbag set up. Like I said, everything is uh, homemade by yours truly and a couple of friends that are always there to help me. That is awesome. What, what size are your wheels? My wheels are 20 by 10s. And and no, are those original welds? No. Okay. No, they are actually Sendel brand and it's a model S08 that is being long discontinued and of course it's the wheels that make the look of the truck it does i love them and people won't believe that i pay 85 dollars per wheel brand what? new what yes and that was brand new yes wow i love how like now everybody thinks they need to spend you know a hundred thousand dollars to build a crew cab that you could enjoy and drive with your family and uh obviously you built this one and you've been enjoying it for almost 20 years. Yes. And um, you told me, I mean, it's a, not a budget build per se, but you're not blowing all your money on it, but you've been driving it, pretty much daily driving it the whole time you've owned it, no? Ever since I moved to Texas, I can brag that I can daily drive it. Back in Chicago, we had to spend a winter park in a, in a driveway. 
Uh, and just because the lack of traction during winter uh, over there. Yeah. But yeah, uh, right here in Texas, I can daily drive it. It's got great fuel economy. I can get 19 gallons, 19 miles per gallon, a city driving, and I can get 13 miles per gallon during highway driving. So it's actually really, really good for a 460. Yes, for a, for a heavy uh, vehicle like this. Since we're on, over here, I would like to show you one of my creations and one I call myself the, you know, the first person to build. And it is this roll pen. You can see right here oh, yeah. that it was made out of the the top of a, of a tailgate. And that's uh, it's very rough because I lack all the fabrication skills that will require to make a piece of work of you know yeah, of but showing. But you made it yourself. Yes. And it looks awesome. I like it. Thank that you. That was one of the first things I noticed. And then tell me. What was, maybe, yeah, let's hit them. Gotta love us. Air compressors, they do pump some good air. Buy air. So, what's the reasons behind your flowers? Okay, so, a lot of people ask me that. Um, so the flowers and the old milk jugs, they come together to set and assemble. When I go to shows, I go and lay the truck down right there and put the flowers um, in the milk jugs. And this is just to create the ambience. Like this truck has been abandoned there that someone used it as yard art, you know? I love it. That, that's the that's impression I would like to keep. And you know, a lot of people actually ask me, hey, what's with the flower, dude? Every time you're at a show, we see this and like, that's just how it came about. Like I figured like, it's gonna give it that vibe that Heck it's yeah. being just left there to rot and you know, someone use it as art. And then what all have you done on the inside? The inside is completely untouched and it's one of the uh, areas of the truck that I don't have yet, uh, you know, decided what, uh, which way I'm gonna finish. So the interior is just as I bought the truck and the only thing that I have done is a 79 um, tilt steering column, the F600 instrument cluster and the shifter. It's the only thing that I, uh, that I modified in, inside. Everything else is pretty much the way I, I, I bought the truck. And before anybody says, oh man, this truck is dirty. Why didn't he clean the interior? Well, that's because he literally daily drives this. So that's yes. just how it is. Yeah, probably the crappiest truck ever to be featured in this <laughs> super fancy segment. And I honestly, I feel honored. <laughs> well, on, I'm honored to have you. Thank you. I appreciate you watching and I appreciate everybody else that's watching this because without you and them, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be able to do this. You know, if people didn't watch and people didn't build cool trucks for me to make these videos, I wouldn't have this to do. So thank you for doing that. It really does mean a lot to me. No, thank you. So uh, I think maybe we need to go take this on the highway and show them how it drives, huh? Yes, let's, let's see. All Hopefully right. it won't leave us stranded. I hope not. All right, so now we're driving. And uh, first, dude, this thing is comfortable. It is really comfortable. Is it? <laughs> I like it. I do like it. It, uh, you know, you start charging you by the hour after a little while, but they're, uh, <laughs> they're the original seats. They're the original seats. And uh, since I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the interior, they're staying for as long as they need to stay in. Awesome. And then tell me about your gauges. Oh, there you go. It's an F600 cluster and of course the airbag gauges. They have the main, the main there just so I can, you know, give the air ride control on point. The gauges, 
They are for uh, from uh, the 91 F-350 that I had originally got the the engine from. This the speedometer. Nice. The the other four gauges that are of a uh, 92 Thunderbird. Fuel, bolts, uh, temperature, and oil pressure, and of course everything else in <laughs> in between over here. AC blows freezing cold, the windows work good. I love it. So, we spoke a little bit, you told us some of the truck, but do you, tell me some of the plans that you have for the truck. What, what do you think you want to keep doing to it? Because you've already had it for, you said, 25 years? Yes, uh, close to 20 years instead. I, I live in Chicago for 25 years. The truck was originally brought to Chicago from Colorado Springs back in 2005 so I'm a little shy of owning it for 20 years I had different visions in the beginning uh, first I I wanted to make a diesel and you know I had a diesel engine installed which I didn't like so I changed plans completely so a big block was the next best option back then just because it needs lots and lots of torque to keep it moving so i have a boat anchor in there 7.5 uh, 460 fuel injected that makes uh probably 240 horsepower but can easily make 450 foot pounds of torque on demand and it feels good i mean we're doing you know 65 70 yeah a 2000 rpm yeah and it's where it likes to live a 2000 rpm is where it makes us it, it's it's home it's happy there right there i'm on fourth gear on the the main transmission but we can shift to uh the gear vendors overdrive they will be like a fifth and it drops 250 rpm nice. and it's quieter for the ride and it you know like I said, he loves it there at the 1800 to 2000 RPM area. This thing is so cool. I love everything about it. Yeah. I love the Thank hat you. holder. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. All hat, no cattle. No cattle. That's my motto. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to enjoy the rest of the cruise. We're going to pick you guys back up soon. That was a great drive. I enjoy it. She behaved. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh oh, the cops are here. <laughs> All right guys, so we made it back to the shop and this truck is awesome. And Labario, you're awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time no. to just walk over and say what's up. Yesterday in the video, you'll watch it, before you even said anything, I saw your truck parked over there. So I'm over here. You guys, if you haven't yet watched, go back on my videos. I'm at Casey's. We've been making some videos. I've been here in Texas for a while. And Labario works here at the auto center right there. So I saw your truck and then you came okay. over yesterday for lunch to introduce yourself. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure. And I scratched one of my bucket list by meeting you. It's just like... Like I tell you, it's very awesome that there's people like you that like, you know, take the time to feature, you know, other, other people's vehicles, yeah. you know, that show that the passion is alive for this old type of uh, pickup trucks. So, like I said, it was in my bucket list to meet with you. Well, now I you. can scratch that off. We still got probably going to your show maybe taking a road trip with you oh yeah so this is not the last you've seen of no me no way no you're <laughs> definitely and thank then you for you guys he just mentioned it so january 19th and 20th in key largo florida i'm making my own truck show it's called solos yeah, beach bonanza so you can go to solosbeachbonanza.com it's got all the info it's a free show bring your truck bring yourself just come have fun we're gonna have a good time that's all it's about and uh 
back to this video. If you can, smash the like button. It really helps me out. Drop a comment, just say hi. Let me know what you think about the truck. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. Subscribe, see you in the next one.